Hi everyone, welcome to this week's training. Now this week's training is all about how to alleviate the emotional signs of um, stress and the reason why I have um, specifically chosen this topic is I had run um, a workshop um, a few weeks ago and it was all about profound stress and the signs and symptoms and throughout that workshop you know we had discussed like how stress affects us on a physical level on an emotional level on a mental health level and what I found was when I was talking about it there was so much to cover and I really wanted to do it justice I really wanted to ensure that we really could have the opportunity to discuss this fully, explore this fully and really connect with these individual topics. So that's why I have broken them down even further to make sure that we all have access to this information because as I always say knowledge is power and knowing all of this um, tools, tips, tricks can really really help us educate ourselves, educate our, our colleagues, um, our friends, our family who are all in similar situations and it can really enhance our life because in this instance, if we have the tools, the knowledge and understanding on how to alleviate the emotional signs of stress, how can that possibly change our lives? There's so many ways it can. Um, and this is why I really like to cover topics quite into, oh my word. So. I'm laughing because I've just finished another training in my group and I really struggled with this one word and it's the same word I've just struggled with. Into, yeah, it'll come back to me. If you know in your head or if you've just watched my training and then I've remembered the word, um, put it in the comments and give me a helping hand. Um, I don't know what is going ro wrong with my brain today. Um, maybe a little bit dehydrated. It is quite warm in Scotland just now. So really going into this in a bit more detail can give us the tools, the skills and the understanding to educate ourselves, to educate the people around us so we can truly enhance our experiences within the workplace and really preserve and protect our well-being as much as possible. So put a number one in the comments if you're ready for the training, if you're really truly ready to understand how we can alleviate those emotional signs of stress and also put in the comments like where are you from in the world like I know I have um, people a lot of people from Scotland uh, one of our own we have people from the United States um, I'm trying to think of who else we have in this specific group um, but yeah, put um, where you're from and also comment on why you specifically are watching this training. Is this something that you want to avoid? Do you want to avoid those emotional signs following on from stress? Or is this something that you've experienced in the past? Is it a case of, you know, when you read the title, you thought, oh gosh, that's something I can really resonate with because it's something I struggled with. Or is it something you're experiencing just now and you really want to know the immediate tools that you can really use to alleviate those those felt symptoms? So I'm curious to know. So if you feel ready, if you feel able, please put it in the comments. Um, I'm creating this group to have that safe space where we can explore all of these topics, where we can start to discuss them and reduce the taboo around poor workplace well-being. So what oh and one more thing so I have some super exciting news that I'm not going to share just yet um, but it is in relation to the Givers Glow project but if you feel that there's some prevalent factors within workplace well-being or contributing factors within workplace well-being that you feel are really prevalent and um, yeah, prevalent just now, let me know, put them in the comments because I'm really reflecting on the bigger picture around what creates 
contributes to workplace well-being. So what's in my head right now is that kind of that culture, that dynamics, you know, that staff dynamics, um, work dynamics, working together, how that works. I think that would be my first thought. Um, because if you're working with people who aren't supportive, um, if they are not really being helpful, if they're being quite negative, that's really going to impact on your work well-being. The second one I was thinking of is your life as a whole. So if you're maybe not happy in, say, your intimate relationships, if you're um, struggling financially, all of those, these aspects can affect our happiness within the workplace. Um, another one I thought was that inability to manage your stress and that's not for a lack of trying it's maybe just a lack of resources a lack of time to do so um I was also thinking about mindset I think that's maybe a key part um so yes I'm brainstorming just now around kind of those areas so I would love to hear your thoughts around what you feel really contributes to a workplace well-being so either pop them in the comments or drop me a line through um direct message or um connect with me i will pop my clarity call um it's a free call it's just to have an informal chat so if you have any ideas um i would like to contribute to this bit of research please let, let me know because i would love to hear from you so the reason why I focus on emotional um, signs of stress is because there's almost um, a spectrum of it and what we find is some people who experience high stress can become very emotional. <clears throat> I never want to say over emotional because I feel that's quite negative but are maybe not in full control of their emotions maybe feel like they want to cry maybe cry quite often maybe feel quite dysregulated feel quite anxious feel like they're just not able to keep themselves calm the other side of it is that numbness so you can hit either or and what you find is when you hit that numbness it's really difficult to get out of so some people just don't feel anything they feel really indifferent they feel like they can't cry that they can't be emotional so it's quite difficult to do to like figure out where you are on that spectrum sometimes and sometimes feeling really emotional or sometimes feeling really numb it doesn't really give us a full indication of the fact that we're struggling with stress it could mean a number of different other areas so it's really important to have conversations like this so we can recognize the symptoms so feeling those emotional symptoms when stressed are you feeling very emotional and not being able to switch off and feeling quite anxious or are you feeling the opposite where you're almost having that low mood, that depressive thoughts, um, feeling quite numb, not being able to express emotions because both, although very different, both are signs of negative workplace well-being and how our stress levels can really impact us on a really profound emotional level. Another one is that feelings of really being overwhelmed so once again that inability to regulate ourselves just feeling overwhelmed all the time is another key aspect of that emotional signs of stress a last example i wanted to cover was that heavy energy now this is the one that gets me the most when i'm stressed um, my emotional side really picks up that heavy energy and it just drains me. I feel so indifferent, I feel so wound up, I'm up and down, I go from being really indifferent and not caring to being really highly strung and really irritable and I go throughout that spectrum throughout the whole day. My energy levels are so drained. I feel tired. Um, I feel lethargic. I feel moody. You know, like it's such heavy energy. And really recognizing when I feel like that 
can really help me to recognize when I am feeling very emotional um, or not very emotional but experiencing that emotions when stressed. So once again, really reflecting on what it looks like for you when you are struggling with that emotional part of being stressed. So recognizing those symptoms, really starting to reflect on them and then we can work on how to alleviate them. So if you've not watched my training on those five signs of um, profound stress, make sure you go and watch that because there is lots of tips and tricks around the symptoms and how we can really start to recognise them within ourselves. So the three ways that we can start to alleviate the um, signs of emotional stress is the following. So the first one was mindfulness and reflection. So to alleviate those um, emotional signs of stress, it's so amazing to engage in mindfulness and self-reflection. So becoming really self-aware of yourself, being able to acknowledge the changes that you're going through, being able to acknowledge your triggers, being able to be a, yeah be able to sit and be like okay I'm actually not feeling good I'm feeling rubbish I'm feeling really emotional or I'm feeling really numb so therefore that must mean I'm really stressed that is such a key aspect and it's something that we quite often lose sight of especially if we are exposed to that high levels of stress and um, it becomes our normal it becomes our norm and it becomes common practice so really reining it back and engaging in that mindfulness and um, that um, self-awareness can be really really important to alleviate those signs because we begin to recognize them listen to yourself is such an um I know uh, I'll start that again um, listening to yourself through mindfulness is another really powerful way to harness your ability to engage in that alleviation of stress becoming in tune to yourself as well so all of this is encompassed with the mindfulness and self-reflective tools what I find is um, some people talk about mindfulness and it almost is a little bit scary concept because it's such a huge um, topic right now. Mindfulness is massive and sometimes when I talk about it you can see that people are very much like, oh no I don't really want to talk about this too much. Um, so what I really find is it can be really helpful to reflect on what that looks like. So mindfulness to me is being mindful about yourself, being mindful around how you interact with yourself, being mindful around all of those areas. It could be um, how you actually I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Mindfulness is such a huge topic. We will be here until next week. But in this case, being mindful around your emotional state. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a very quick mindfulness exercise, which really enhances our awareness and then our subsequent ability to engage in that self-reflection. So I want you to just get comfortable and I want you to get your feet on the ground, get centered. And I want you to take three deep breaths. And I'll count you in with them. One. Two. Three. I just want you to ask yourself, how are you feeling today? And the chances are you will have had several words immediately come up. It could be happy, 
it could be sad, fed up, burnt out, excited. So just checking in with yourself and just focusing on those words that have immediately come to mind. I then want you to reflect on how you feel on on an emotional level today. Just sitting in that a little bit deeper. And the chances are you will be maybe a little bit more descriptive around how you're feeling when you're specifically focusing on your emotions. And just taking note of what's coming up for you right now. And really acknowledging and giving yourself permission just for that small amount of time to really feel what's going on for you right now. To really recognise all of what's going on for you. I now want you to take three more deep breaths and we're gonna start bringing our attention back to the room but I will count you in for the breaths. So three. Two. One. just when you feel ready, opening your eyes and then shaking it out, just really shaking it out (laughs) because what we find is when we engage in that just really small um, part of mindfulness, just really going into the body and reflecting where you are today, it can just help us to enhance our understanding on our emotional state when we feel stressed, if we are feeling stressed. Um, And what you find is, you know, people who meditate very often, like myself, you know, I like to do it for a lot longer. But if you're new to meditation, sometimes it can feel quite intimidating. So just doing it for three breaths, really sinking in on it, working out where you're at, then doing another three deep breaths just to get yourself out of that mindful state so you feel a bit more aware, a bit more present, can be really helpful because it's a quick fire round. Sometimes if you're stressed, it means that you're not in a place to really sit for ages and reflect on how you are. So using that three breath rule can really be helpful. So that's the first one, reflecting on mindfulness and self-reflection. The second one is talking about what's going on for you. So sharing your experiences, seeking support and creating a supportive culture within your workplace. So what it could be is that you start to normalise it with your colleagues, with your boss, that you um, start talking about stress, how you're feeling on an emotional level and start to normalise that um, within your current workplace, providing you feel it's safe to do so. Start talking to people about it, whether it's a listening service, a coach, a counsellor, a therapist. You have to have a safe space to explore your emotional state when you're feeling stressed. So really reflecting on what that could look like. Sharing your experiences. So for example, this group, sharing your experiences of how you have um, fell on an emotional level when you're feeling stressed. And when you're talking about it, I really want you to reflect on how you can do that safely. 
because in order to really disclose where we're at on an emotional level when we are feeling stressed, we do need that safe space that safe um, forum to really start to reflect on how we're at because the last thing we want is for someone to um, respond in a way that's not helpful. So using these specific forums, speaking to trusted colleagues, speaking to your line manager if you do have that working positive relationship with them, um, speaking to a coach, a counsellor, a therapist, using this group to really share your experiences and talking about what is going on for you right now because just talking about it can really help and what you find is it's that expression, um, a problem shared is a problem halved and it is very true. I um, very often offload when I'm struggling and I just find it really helps me to release that energy that's no longer serving me. The third one is taking time out. So time out to relax, to switch off from the workplace, um, to really get that work-life balance in check, booking time off, um, taking time off if you feel unwell, if you don't feel like you should be in the workplace, because having time away from that place that is aggravating our emotional state through stress can really help towards that healing journey. So really important that we are empowered to take that time back, to take time off and to give ourselves that space away from that aggravating factor. Um, and it can be a huge um, step to do that because you're dedicating that time to yourself. You're making that commitment. You're being boundaried by um asking for that time off or taking that time off. So really reflecting on how you can engage with that extra time off to really support those emotional um, symptoms of stress. I then want you to refer to the worksheet. If you haven't received it, um, please reach out and I will be sure to drop it to you because um, every single one of my workshops has a complimentary um, worksheet as well. And the reason why is because self-reflection can really enhance our ability to make positive changes within our lives. So what I do is the workshop I um, make educational, interactive, but the worksheet is always has elements of self-reflection. So if we engage in self-reflection, we're a lot more accountable, we're a lot more person-centered towards ourselves. So therefore, we're a lot more likely to introduce and implement and keep these specific um, tools. So I want you to um, carry out an action plan. So the first one is how will you really increase that mindfulness and self-reflection into your life? So is it doing that three um, breath rule um, and really just tuning into your body and seeing how you feel? Is it a case of um, journaling? Journaling is such a good one. So is it a case of dedicating 15 minutes per day to journal and to really reflect around where you're at. So really working out on how you can introduce mindfulness and reflection to your life to really alleviate those signs of emotional stress. The next one, talking. So once again, how can you increase your opportunity to talk to people that are going to give you that safe space, that safe forum to do it in? Is it a case of interacting with the training and making sure that you have these um, these concepts, these opportunities to engage in these concepts, sorry? Is it a case of booking a call with me so you have that safe space to explore these aspects further. So really reflecting on how to introduce these talking um, strategies as well. The last one, time out. Now what I would really like you to do is actually commit to specific days or um, sorry, one day or several days um, that you're planning to take off in the near future. So you can really focus on alleviating those signs of stress um, 
and truly begin to live the life that you really want to and alleviating those emotional signs so you can continue to engage in the job that you love. But please get in touch. As always, I will put my um, clarity call um, link in the um, comments. I will also put a link to my new website because I have revamped it. It's looking a lot better. I look a lot more aligned to me. So I will put that in as well for you guys to check out. And as always, please reach out if there's any questions that you have, anything you want to discuss, please let me know because I would love to chat with you further. Take care guys and I will see you next week. Bye.